Alright, so in this video, we are going to doc talk about titration. So within Bezika, you define titration to be the sole addition of uh, a source solution of non-concentration, which we call the titrant to another concentration of a non-volume of a non-concentration. Okay, so that's basically what titration involves. So we can also define our titration to be the quantitative analysis. Okay where we get to add a titrant of a non-concentration to the analyte of a non-volume but a non-concentration so that we're able to determine the concentration of the analyte okay so to summarize what I've talked about is uh, we basically have what we're calling the titrant and then we also have what we're calling the, the analyte so basically in titration the main goal is to find the unknown concentration of the analyte so the concentration of the analyte is is not known but we know its volume okay and then for the titrant we have its volume and then we also have its concentration so we are saying titration is basically the addition of a solution of non concentration which we are calling the titrant to an analyte of a non volume and a non concentration okay so basically that is what titration is all about so the end result of the main goal is to get the quantity of the concentration of our analyte so we get the quantity of uh, how much of a volume of a titrant is used to completely neutralize the analyte so understand basically as we get to look at uh, the acid based titration of course we've got different kinds of titrations um, we have what we call acid based titrations we have what we call redox titrations we have gas phase titrations but for the sake of our course we are going to basically focus more on the acid based titration okay and of course redox titrations so this is basically an illustration of how we basically get to conduct uh, acid based titration so what you're seeing on top there is called uh, the burette and then what you're seeing on the bottom is called the conical flask okay so usually when you're dealing with acid based titrations we can talk about examples of our hydrochloric acid reacting with uh, a base sodium hydroxide so acid based titration involves an acid and a base okay so in this case we usually prefer putting the HCl in the in the burette okay so that is to avoid blockage of our burette because uh, sodium hydroxide is able to react when it's pressed in the burette so we basically that's the hygroscopic nature of sodium hydroxide so we basically place the hydrochloric acid uh, in the burette there. and then the conical flask we just press the base let's say in this case sodium hydroxide okay so of course there are no limitations that depends on what you're trying to do in this case we'll assume that we don't know the volume the volume of our sodium hydroxide is let me not say volume. the concentration of our sodium hydroxide is unknown okay in our conical flask but of course for us to be able to put it in the conical flask we know the volume okay so the volume of our sodium hydroxide is known that's basically the what we can say there now what is going to happen is you are going to use your burette to to be dropping to be making a few drops of uh, the HCl into the conical arts into the conical flask so we use indicators during our titrations to observe the change in terms of neutralization so examples of indicators the common ones we use methyl orange and uh, phenolphthalein of course they are going to be titrations which are going to be self-indicating but in cases where we need indicators we get to work with uh, phenolphthalein methyl orange of course we understand when we get to use which one okay so we can give an example for example phenolphthalein is uh, is known to be colorless in an acidic uh, medium okay so but as you get to press it in um uh, when you press it in something that is alkaline or basic basically the color is uh for, for a weak base the color is pink and then as you get to go to a strong base the ph wizard is somewhere closer to 14 the color becomes purple so you would expect that if you put it in sodium hydroxide the color is going to be obviously purple right so I'm not saying that's what we use in this case I'm just trying to give you an example of what would happen so in such a case as you begin adding drops of hydrochloric acid 
the color of the phenophthalmia would have to start changing until it gets to be colorless. So you use drops to observe the change. Okay. So immediately you see the complete change of the color. You have to stop. But of course, we basically drop, make drops, make some few drops, observe the change, and then as as in, as when you start, first of all, when you start, you notice that it is going to be taking a lot of more drops for the color change to be observed. But as you get to move, you notice that even a single drop will make a very drastic change to the color. So when you reach that stage, you have to make a drop, close, make a drop, close, make a, until that drop that is going to make the complete change, you need to stop. So the volume of a used titrant in our burette is called um, the titration volume. Okay. So in that case, notice that we 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 add uh, our hydrochloric acid of non concentration, and then we've also determined the tit the titrant or the titration volume. So we'll be able to use our stoichiometry, as you will see in our uh, examples to come, and we'll be able to determine the concentration of the sodium hydroxide as well. Okay, because remember, in our conical flask we know the volume, but we just don't know the concentration. So we can use uh concentration and stoichiometric calculations to be able to determine the the concentration there okay so looking at our common indicators we have methyl orange and phenolphthalein so basically when do we get to use which one so we are told methyl orange works better in reactions between strong acids and weak bases so when you're dealing with uh, a strong acid with a weak base we basically methyl orange works better as the pH range of the indicator is between 3.1 and 4.4. .4. So that is uh, the pH range of the indicator. Phenolphthalein is used on reactions between weak acids and strong bases. As the pH range of the indicator is effective between 8.3 and 10. Okay. That's one thing that we basically would have to note about the two. We have to also talk about the difference that is there. Okay. So some of the main differences that are there between methyl orange and phenolphthalein are given below. So one thing that we get to note is uh, in an acid, methyl orange indicator turns red while phenolphthalein remains colorless. That's very important. Phenolphthalein is colorless in, of course, they, they, for, they, for us to say remains, we basically we need to not say the original color of phenolphthalein is colorless. And then, of course, in a basic solution, methyl orange turns yellow while phenolphthalein turns pink. Okay. So it only becomes to be very purple when it is placed in a strong base. That's when it becomes purple. Otherwise, in weak ones, it will just be pink. Okay, so basically, those are the two major differences between our common used indicators. Now that we basically understand the basic idea that is uh, lies uh, behind uh, titration, at this point, we are now able to look at some practice problems, starting with the first one. Okay. It takes 12.5 milliliters of a 0.3 molar hydrochloric solution to neutralize to 85 milliliters of sodium hydroxide solution. What is the concentration of a sodium hydroxide solution? So we need to basically summarize the question. We've been given hydrochloric acid, which is our acid, and then we've been given sodium hydroxide, which is our base. So it's is acid-base titration. So we are talking about neutralization. So we are saying it takes 12.5 milliliters of our HCl to neutralize to 85 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. Now, notice that in this case, we've been given the concentration of our HCl, and then we don't know the concentration of our sodium hydroxide. So that's what the question is asking us to find. So we use titration to determine the 12.5 milliliters. Okay. So the basic idea is, uh, in this case, you have your conical flask there. So the conical flask, we had put our sodium hydroxide so our sodium hydroxide basically had a volume of 285 milliliters, right? That's one thing that we are taught initially. Now, observing our color changes, after the color change, we had noticed that the volume that was used from our bullet was 12.5 uh, milliliters. That's the basic idea. So now, after we perform the titration, we now want to find the concentration. How do you do that? So we'd have to write first of all the equation, the reaction there. So we had HCl reacting with sodium hydroxide to give us what? 
So sodium, this is going to give us uh, a salt, right? Sodium chloride, and then of course plus water. So what is we are basically writing the main equation because we are interested in looking at the more ratios between our reactants. Now you notice that just by the way we've written it is already balanced. So HCl and sodium hydroxide basically are in the ratio of the one to one. Very simple to understand, right? Yes. Okay. So if we're able to find the number of moles of our uh, hydrochloric acid, we we are also able to get that to the number of moles of our uh, sodium hydroxide. So we did say that concentration is basically the number of moles dissolved in a volume, right? So therefore, number of moles gives us a product of concentration and volume. The concentration in this case is 0 0.30. Now notice that molar concentration means more per liter. So we would have to multiply by the volume and our volume is in milliliters. So it's what's our volume? Our volume is 12.5. Now milli means 10 to the power negative 3 in liters. Or the other way is divide the milliliters by a thousand to convert to liters so that we're able to cancel out the liters as we can see. So the liters would have to cancel out so that you just remain with a number of moles. And of course 12.5 divided by a thousand multiplied by 0 0.3. So the number of moles I'm getting is uh, 3.75 times 10 to the power negative 3 moles of what? These are the number of moles of our hydrochloric acid that had reacted in this reaction. Okay. Now we are using the more ratios first to determine the number of moles of the other one. So we we'll say, okay, our HCl, the number of moles basically the ratio is 1 to 1, right? So if it is one to one, it means that the number of moles of our hydrochloric acid are also equal to the number of moles of what? Our sodium hydroxide. So in this case, we've already found the number of moles of the, hydro the, sodium, hyd the sodium hydroxide by just looking at the more ratios. So this is now also becomes the number of moles of our sodium hydroxide by the more ratios. Okay. Now notice that we already have the volume of sodium hydroxide. So we should be able to find the concentration. So concentration is of course number of moles divided by what? The volume. So a number of moles have been determined using the more ratios. Now we can divide by what? By the volume. So I want our volume to be in molar concentration. So we'd have to convert want our concentration to be in molar concentration, we'd have to divide by our volume given in liters. So two eighty five would have to be divided by a thousand to convert from milliliters in two liters. So basically do that. So I'm getting 0 0.285 times 10 to the power negative. Uh, sorry, not just like 0 0.85. So that is in liters. So you're now dividing 3.75 times 10 to the power negative 3 divided by 0 0.285. So the concentration that I'm getting is uh, 0 0.013 molar concentration. So that is how you handle that question. So we've used basic stoichiometry to, be, to determine the concentration that was basically required. Okay. So at this point, you can pause the video and try out the second question. The second question says uh, it takes uh, 38 milliliters of uh, 0 0.75 molar concentration of sodium hydroxide solution to completely neutralize 155 milliliters of a sulfuric acid solution. What is the concentration of the sulfuric uh, acid solution? Okay. So our base in this case is sodium hydroxide. We've given us the volume and also the concentration. So we should be able to find the number of moles and right away let's do that. So the number of moles is equal to product of concentration and volume. Concentration is 0 0.75 moles. So molar concentration capital time stands for more per liter. Okay. Multiply by our volume which is 38 milliliters. So milli means 10 to the power negative 3. 
so in liters so our liters would have to go so that we remain with moles now 0 0.75 times 38 is 28.5 times 10 to the power negative 3 moles so we found the number of moles of our sodium hydroxide that were required by what by the sulfuric acid so these are the number of moles of sodium hydroxide now we have been given the volume of our sulfuric acid so now first of all write the reaction there chemical equations so that we're able to see the more ratios between the two okay let's do that so sodium hydroxide reacting with h2so4 so in this case the salt that is being produced is uh, sodium sulfate so sodium sulfate sulfate has got the sulfate has got uh, a two there because of what we are seeing on the on the hydrogen there okay and then we have the reaction there between sorry another product that we should have being produced in this case is water now is the reaction balanced the number of sodium are not balanced there so I'll add a two now observe for water is it balanced well, how many hydrogens do we need for water? So here there are two, two oxygen atoms, and then there are two there. So we'll have to put a two there. So that two I'm putting there will make us have four hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms, which now balances out the equation. So now our interest here is we are focusing on the... Yeah, our interest here we are focusing on... Uh, or not basically is happening right so sodium hydroxide is in the ratio of 2 to 1 with the HCl4 now notice that this value that we had found was for what for sodium hydroxide okay that's what we had found so what can you say there so we'd have to put it under the sodium hydroxide now we we'll put a variable to represent the value of the number of moles of a sulfuric acid there so in this case we get to multiply 2x being equal to 28.5 times 10 to the power negative 3 right so at this point we we'll have to divide by 2 so that we're able to get the number of moles of uh, so uh, our answer becomes 14.25 times 10 to the power negative 3 now x is denoting the number of moles of what? The number of moles of of our H2, which is like our sulfuric acid H2SO4. Okay, so now we found the number of moles of the hydrochloric acid, or <laughs> not the, hydro, the sulfuric acid. So we need to find the concentration now. So we've been given the volume and the number of moles. So concentration is called number of moles over the volume. The number of moles we've calculated to be 14.25 times 10 to the power negative 3 moles. And then we are dividing by the volume, which is uh, <coughs> 155 milliliters. So 155 milliliters is the same as times 10 to the power negative 3 in liters, or in other terms, divided by 1,000. Okay. So to make our calculations easy, I can just cancel those. So at 14.25 divided by 155, gives me 0 0.092 molar concentration <laughs> since we have moles per liter okay so that's how you handle the second question